All right, now, in order to begin modeling the face, we're gonna need a side reference to go along with our front reference. So we're gonna take the front reference here, and we're just going to rotate it while holding Shift so we get a copy of it. Now, as I start to rotate, I see my angle snap is not turned on. So without letting go of my rotation, I hit A on the keyboard to turn on angle snap, and I'm gonna come back and find my 90 degree rotation. So I want to copy not an instance, because this is going to actually be changed. The size of the plane is going to get adjusted a little bit. So we bring that over to the side. We're going to go to our material editor, and we're going to create a new standard material. So we can click here on the little radio button, grab a bitmap, and then we want to grab the shaded side view. So then we're going to drop that onto our selected object and tell it to show in the viewport. Now, as I see here, because it was copied from the background image, the UV map goes all the way side to side. Well, the height is accurate, but the side to side is not. So in our UVW map, we're gonna to go to bitmap fit. We're gonna grab that same side image and it's gonna basically tile it across there for us. So we're going to go back to the plane, we're going to drop the width down, so we don't see all those repeated images, because we just don't need them. We go back to the UVW map level, and then we can move him forward. Now as we zoom in though, we're going to see we've got quite a bit of detail missing from this image. It's really low res. And we didn't care when we modeled the musculature, because we could see enough of the background image that it was fine. We didn't need it to be perfect detail. So we're going to go here to Shaded, we're going to go down to Materials, and then we're going to turn on Realistic Materials with Maps. And you're going to see that that's going to clean up that image considerably. So now as I model the face, I'm going to have a lot more ability to match up those details more accurately. So we're going to model the face in a pretty similar way to how we model the body. We're going to start with a single plane, and we're just going to keep pushing edges around until we get it where we want it. So for this, I'm gonna start with a much lower resolution plane, right? We're gonna start with just a one by one. Now, we can look at making some adjustments before we get any further and get it into position. On this face, I see this half, so I wanna move this over. So I'm actually modeling the half of the face that I can see in this viewport. So if I start to work here and find that things aren't perfectly lined up, I may have to make some minor adjustments to figure out where our faces are going to be when they do line up. So we're gonna keep our front reference here as our main. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click and convert this to an editable poly. Then I can start working with edges to shift drag them around and rotate them. Get out of working pivot, and we're gonna change this to the pivot center. And then we're just gonna keep moving that. So we can actually go back and rotate these slightly. What I like to think about as I'm working around the eye is basically all of these edges should fundamentally be spokes that point into the center of the eye structure. Now, it's not an absolute, but the more I actually pay attention to that and continue to make sure that I rotate that edge as I go around, I'm gonna make sure that the flow of geometry goes all the way around that loop. And once we need to add some detail to the eye structure and or any other part of the face, we're gonna wanna have those loops actually flowing around the mesh correctly. So don't just run this around without actually thinking about where you position things because it will make a big difference as to how you're able to continue or complete the mesh. So as we move and rotate around, we're gonna get to a point where we really can't connect anything without using the bridge tool. So now I wanna grab these two edges. We're gonna find bridge, and we're gonna make sure this is just set to a single segment. 
So that works great. Now we're going to go into vertices here and we're going to use just a little bit of soft selection to grab a little more along the side of the eye there. And then we're going to use our side view to start pulling that back in space. Now, the closer in we get here, the more we're going to see that things match up in spots and don't match up in spots. So the corner of the eye here and the corner of the eye here really don't match. The top lid of the eye and the top lid of the eye really don't match. I'm gonna get out of my sub object. I'm gonna grab this side reference plane. I see here my Y axis is active. So I just wanna drag that down a little bit to see if I can get my side view here to match up more accurately with my front view. Then I really wanna take both of those planes and we're gonna freeze them after we check object properties to make sure show frozen and gray is not checked. And then we can freeze right there. So now that they're frozen, I won't be able to grab them by accident, which is a good thing. So now we just keep kind of working that mesh around a little bit to get things positioned where we want them. So now I want to grab and keep moving things around to round off the structure, knowing where some of these things go and knowing that some of this is going to be tucked back into the mesh in the corner by the nose. That's actually going to work out pretty well, but we've got way too much transition here, so we're going to bring that back. And this whole inner edge here should be a little farther back, where on the bottom eyelid, we're not going to have quite as steep of a transition there, and typically the lower part of the lid is going to be slightly forward. So now as we look around and check this out in perspective, we're going to see that we've already basically got what starts to feel like the structure of the opening around the eye. So I think a little bit of this needs to be redistributed around here a little bit more. So we have a little bit more volume change. But this part and getting this kind of set up and get everything nicely distributed, this is a pretty important part of the process around the eye. So we do want to make sure that we don't really kind of skip this and rush into modeling the face because basically everything is going to come from here. So we're going to grab our outer border edge and I'm just going to shift scale that up. Create a new set of polys around there. And we've got to get back to our left view here. We had rotated around a little bit and got things out of position. So now it's a matter of reorganizing what we just scaled to make sure that we maintain that flow. Now here in the side of the face, I'm going to narrow this a bit so that it doesn't have to push back quite so far. But we also want to continue looking at where that flow is going. Now, as we're getting closer to the bridge of the nose here, we're going to need to bring this back. And then we're going to have to take these two and actually start to bring them forward. So as we're getting more into the structure of the face, you know, the more we understand about the structure of the face, the more easily we're going to be able to model it. So again, we look around in perspective, kind of get an overview of what's going on. And then again, back to border to grab some more of that. So next, we're just going to keep working out around that eye a little bit farther. 